Hey guys, I'm back and it is a beautiful Saturday morning. I'm on my way uh, into the shop, but when I got home yesterday, the first of our May boxes has arrived. We've got Barrel and Blade from May 2018. So I figured I'd do a quick early morning unboxing since we've got beautiful weather here. Never Enough Tactical should arrive today. And if it does, I'm gonna have somebody drop that off to me at the shop and we'll do the unboxing at the shop. Let's do some shout outs before we get into this box though today because it's been a little bit since we've done some. So today, saying thank you to the viewers, giving shout outs to Joe Fish Unboxing, Collins Crest, Ross Parker, Ethan Engel Knives and Fishing, and Outdoor Hangouts. So thanks guys for watching the channel and commenting on videos and taking part in the discussions and everything. Appreciate you. Uh, for opening the box today um, and what I've been carrying around at the shop lately. This was on the channel. I actually um, kind of did the work in a video to this a long time ago. If I can find the video, I'm pretty sure it's on the channel still. I'll put a link to this in the video description. This was a normal old Spyderco military that I did some modifying on a long, I mean a long time ago. Uh, I did the, I did the pocket wave opener too well because yeah. I cannot take this thing out of my pocket without the blade opening now. Um, but uh, it's been a real workhorse around the shop for various things. So we'll use this to get into this box today. Yeah. Let's see, what have we got? Huh. Operation Land Navigation. I've never bothered to look at the other side of this card before. Uh, this month we wanted to include some of the best gear available to help you find your way. All right. So apparently this month we also have level one and level one. Well, how interesting for us. Level one and level one. Okay. So normally I think, I'm pretty sure it's level two on this side and level one on that side. The easy way to figure this out is to just look and figure out which one of these is the higher value and, and this has the higher value stuff, so this is level two. And that's what we're unboxing today. We're unboxing level two. Starting in the box, I guess this is just a generic um, promo code for anybody, if anybody's interested in Barrel and Blade. Here is a 10% off card that you can give. So there you go, anybody that would like to uh, try it out. Cool. So let's take everything out of the, I'm really curious, I wanna get into this, but we'll save this for last. We'll take everything out of the box as we do, and that way we can make our piles. And we'll go mostly in order according to the card. So first we're gonna look at the Rothko Matte Pocket with an MSRP of $19. So I don't know, I like that the uh, little packing fluff this month is black and not the usual uh, generic brown. So I've said before, I think Rothko's stuff is getting better. They have kind of a reputation for being cheap and cheesy sometimes, but... Um, so, looks like just a nylon, you know, map pocket. Interesting. Um, I'm not sure why there's bags inside the bag. Let's look at the info card. Um, so now I'm gonna have to, gonna have to put more links. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught my video about you know tactical writing gear, and oh, I know why they put the bag inside the bag because, great, because they're why would you do this? All right, so I'm not understanding this design. So here is your your map case, right? And the whole idea is, and they advertise water resistant or waterproof nylon or whatever. And then they put these grommets in there that let water right in. So two schools of thought. Number one, you know, you can put your map or your chart in here to keep it safe from the elements, or maybe you're just putting it in here so you could write on the plastic and take notes and everything. If that's your only concern is to be able to write on it, then cool, doesn't matter. But if you're putting it in here to protect it, why are you gonna put holes to let water and everything into this? It doesn't make any sense. 
um, which could explain why there's a secondary bag that goes inside the bag because this itself is not waterproof and this is well then I, I, I don't get it so anyway like I was like I was just saying I'll, I'll put links to the video where I talk about tactical field writing gear and everything because I talked briefly about map cases and, and alcohol markers and stuff that you would use specifically to write on things like this um, so that'll be in the video description if you want to check that out um, I, I liked this up front because this is a cool thing to use but um, I don't know I, I think it's kind of a flawed design you've got a leaky map case for $19 and now I've got to put stuff in my tactical Ziploc baggie to actually use it. Uh, hmm. So I really, I don't know what they were thinking by installing these grommets here. What's the point? Uh, I just, I, I don't know. I've gotten feedback from a lot of viewers and uh, apparently you guys would like me to go back to the old pile names. So the like it meh don't like it this is going in the don't like it because i i just find it to be it's not even meh. it's like to me a good all-purpose map case like this needs to be weatherproof and this one's not so it's just like what's the point it's not even meh. it's it's not good it just it doesn't work for me so right off the bat first box in may first item out don't like it sad sad but let's move on to the ranger beads for nine dollars now i am very familiar with this item this by the way can be made so nine dollars okay um you can make a ranger paste counter like this out of rubber washers and some 550 cord for a fraction of the price um, now these are cool to have if you know how to use them they're they're great here's what this is dependent on you need to know your paste count um, I guess you don't need to know your pace count. So let me explain how what this is really. So here's a picture. So you make this and it's used for navigation. And you know, you can clip it on. You don't even have to clip it on. You just leave it in your pocket. But basically, um, at a set interval, let's say every uh, 50 meters or 50 yards. And you know, in the army and when you're learning land navigation, um, you, they set out a specific meter pace count and you learn how to set your pace count based on certain number of steps for certain numbers of meters so you learn when you take those certain number of steps you've gotten that that many meters you would put down one of those beats so that when you're doing actual land navigation with a map or a chart you can pace exactly how far you've traveled and then you know, every time you've gone through all of these, you flipped on one of the top ones. Um, so again, when you are accurately able to measure how far you're traveling, this is a really good tool to use. Um, these are cool, these, these sets. Um, but again, you can make this very easily. You, you can go to Home Depot and get some plain rubber washers and some 550 cord and make the same thing for a, a lot smaller price. I'm going to, after I do the whole unboxing, uh, I'll go inside and I'll actually put this together and show you how easy it is to build one of these. Um, so, while it, I think it's a good item when you know how to use it, um, again, the fact that you can make one of these yourself really quick and easily for a pretty low price. Uh, I'm going to put it in the map pile, just because I don't think you need to spend $9 on one of these. Although it is nice that they give you the, the carabiner clip to... You know hang it from your gear whatever bless you ethan so let's make these ranger beads real quick I'll show you how simple this process can be so inside here um oh huh. all right so you've got a link to some video instructions there um some tips on how to tie some knots and everything now you can do some very simple tying on here um Lots of different use instructions, I guess. Got a little land navigation cheat sheet card. And a sticker. You don't really need the inner strings in your 550 cord for this to work. So, you know, either or, whatever you want to do. Um, leaving the inner strings in here 
I think helps keep the, the washers kind of tight on the strings. So when you slide them up or down, they stay where you want them to, to be. So I tend to leave the inner strings in when I make them. Little bit more difficult to, um, to get the strings through the washers that way. Um, it, you know, it all goes towards how it functions. Uh, it works fine without the strings in it. And you know what, I'll go ahead just to show that. I'll take the strings out and show you how it works just as well. With having cut the ends of the strings to get the inner fibers out, we're gonna wanna melt those ends just to make them a little bit non-fraying and to make it a little bit easier to get it through the washers. Yeah, I can't do all sorts of cool tricks with my Zippo. If you can do one of those, like flip it open and all that cool stuff, power to you. I'm not one of those people. I'm a simple Zippo user. Okay. So to start this off, simple, loop through the carabiner, put the running ends of the uh, 550 cord through the loop and that's gonna lock it in. You wanna take four of your washers or whatever you're using. That's gonna be your, your upper level counters and you're gonna wanna just pass your string through there, your cord. Now, if you're having a little bit of trouble doing that, and getting them to go. Real simple solution is just use your awl, your punch on, on just about any multi-tool or you know any pointy object will do but um, you know a lot of people wonder what is that all for? I mean it's for poking things through. This is uh, happens to be the um, SOG power plate came in a battle box right so another item I had just from a subscription box. You want to be careful not to punch through the cord but you know it's really good just for poking and pushing things through there and moving things along. So that's one of the things it's for. When you take the strings out, the inner core, uh, not as hard to pass the 550 cord through, but still could use a little hand now and then. And that's exactly what one of these little tools is really good for. Makes your life a lot easier. So I'm gonna put all four of these washers on the 550 cord and get it up and ready. All four of our beads are on there now. Now in the instructions there they tell you add a bead. Um, yeah, I think that's gaudy and I think that's stupid. I don't I don't do that. There's no you don't need it. There's no reason for it. Unless you want people to know how hardcore you are because you have a skull dangling from your stuff. So just leave yourself just a tiny little space. And then you want to leave yourself a little bit of space to move your washers down a little bit. Then you'll just make your first knot. You really only need enough space to move each one of these things down once. So. Done. And then move them back up. Okay. Now you get to feed on the remaining washers. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I use 10, they use eight, whatever. And you put them on the exact same way as you put the other ones on. And there's your next eight washers and you're just gonna tie another knot a little further down so you have room to move all eight washers. I mean, and bam, you then have your own Ranger pace counter finished. That That's all it needs to be. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Um, if you want to make it nice and neat, let's just give a little slice right there. Zippo it. Those ends really good and melted. Flatten them out so there's no chance of any of that unraveling. Okay, with the end all melted and sealed in, now you can you can neaten that up if you want. You know, just trim the plastic there. The point is you don't want it to unravel and you don't want that knot coming out. But guess what? Here here, here are your ranger beads. Here's your pace counting beads. Done. Simple. Like I said, you could do this at Walmart, you could do this at Home Depot, all you need is some heavy duty uh, rubber washers, some 550 cord, it doesn't even need to be 550 cord, it could be like the cheap accessory cord. Um, you just need to be able to move rubber washers around on some cord, and that's, that's all this thing needs to be. Simple, easy, but useful tool, really useful tool to have. We'll put it in the mat. 
Next item, a Brunton True Arc 15 Compass with an MSRP of $60. So it's made in the USA. Nice. It's got a full-size mirror. They say it can be used for signaling, which is cool. This is good globally. Now, um, that might be like some people say like, well, okay, great. Um, there are some compasses that are only good in the Northern Hemisphere and some that are only good in the Southern Hemisphere. So a global compass is actually a really good thing to have. And that all has to do with the magnetics and the way it's made. Again, not my favorite type of compass. I, I like my military style just because I'm used to it. But this is a very, very good, lots of features. Like this a lot, especially, uh, you know, chart navigating. Really nice. Oh, wow, look at that. Nice magnifier. Great feature is that right there gives you your your bearing and it gives you the reciprocal like all together, which is really cool. Makes a lot of like triangulation and uh, just a lot of navigational features really easy. So this is actually a really good quality compass. Now I haven't really price checked online, but oh, an angleometer there to tell you what you're doing with your uh, sighting mirror. Sweet. So this is definitely going in the Leica pile. Lots of good features. Comes with uh, inside some other helpful stuff, some documentation and uh, lots of explanations. Some little quick reference stuff there and oh, look like a little a little grid square. Um, it's what we call it in the military, but like lots of lots of helpful stuff. Very cool. Very cool. I I really like this. Um, this is really awesome. So nifty. I've been using that word a lot, huh? So first item in the like pile. So moving on, we'll leave the CRKT for the end. The Aquamira water filter straw with an MSRP of twelve dollars. So while not quite um, a navigational tool, always talking about the importance of water in any situation, right? And this looks like a rather simple one. Just put that right in your water source and drink. And the real question is, how much is this good for? I see here it doesn't protect against bacteria, viruses, germs, or the disease carrying organisms. Okay. Do not use with water that is microbiologically microbiolo unsafe or unknown quality without adequate disinfection before or after the system. So, I guess we wouldn't want to use this straight from like a stream or something. It does 30 gallons. Now, there are some filters that will say they'll take out microbes and filter out things like uh, Giardia and stuff that might be in there. I, I can't get this informational package out of there, so that's uh, not cool. I mean, I guess you could boil water before using it, just to be sure. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the effectiveness of this straw is. I know there are filters that will filter out some germs and stuff like that. I know not all of them do. But a lot of the ones that will filter stuff like that are a lot more expensive than this one. So. But you know what? I'm not going to scoff at having it. I'm going to put it in the map pile because not as effective as a lot of the other ones that have come in other boxes, but you know, that's okay. And you know what I just realized? This little uh, UCO fire starting kit isn't even on the card. So I don't even, I don't even know what's up with their card this month. So let's see what we get here. So according to the box, we get a waterproof case. Cool. 12 hurricane matches, three sweet fire tabs. I'm all in favor of fire starting. So we get three strikers that we can uh, replace in there. Nice big matches. Some actual fire starting material. And wow, these are some big matches. And based on the coating on here, I'm guessing these are uh, some water resistant matches. I wouldn't want to dunk them in, you know, actual like water, 
but I'm betting these things will stay lit in rain and such. It's called hurricane matches. I would hope that they would. So I'm a fan m mostly of this container, actually. This is a really good, you know, waterproof container that's a nice size, not too big, not too small, but bigger than a lot of the match containers. You know, you can put a lot of different stuff in this. But nice to have a, another self-contained little fire starting kit. Just simple and effective. I'm putting this in the like it pile. I have no idea what they say the MSRP on it is because it's it's not even it's not even on the card. But what else? Let's move on to the CRKT Strafe with an MSRP of $80. A Japanese-inspired design, and it's considered a tactical utility knife. Well, those two are two separate things. So let's take a look. Fixed blade, judging by the size of the box or the world's biggest folder. I don't like the uh, pattern on the handle right away. I don't know what the, is this supposed to be? What is that? So I already have some, some criticism here. Is this for your belt? What is this thing? Oh, this is not G10, this is plastic. I would rather have a belt looper or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure, but let's, um, well, let's just take a look at the, ooh, yes, we like the knife. We do like the knife. That's pretty cool. Great stonewash finish. Nice big blade, great look to it. I see the Japanese inspiration in it. Pretty good. Hmm. It's comfortable. It's grippy. So inside, weather turned suddenly really nasty out there. It was beautiful. Let's take a closer look at the Strafe by CRKT. So following up on this little, what they is actually called a J hook. So if you were to carry this in your waistband, in your waistline, the J hook can hook onto your belt. And that way, if you're carrying it vertically, um, the J-hook holds onto your belt when you draw the knife. Wow, it's really in there. And it holds it in. Now, you can also replace this with a tech lock if you wanted to. That's what these little uh, grommets in there are for. This is just one way to carry it. So it will actually lock into a belt. Um, short of replacing with a tech lock, though, it doesn't give you, this sheath doesn't give you a lot of options. I mean, yeah, it, you could carry it as a neck knife. I guess it would be super heavy. You could also, though, because of these little spaces here, you could strap it to some of your gear. Um, it would be really nice, because I've seen CRKT and Kershaw do this before. I've seen a lot of companies do this. In a box like this, with a sheath like this, give you the pieces to give you the option to, to do that. Uh, to replace it with something else. But anyway, this is the, the designer himself, Burley decided that this is one of his favorite ways to carry, so it comes with a J-hook. The knife itself, like we said outside, beautiful stonewash finish. You can see the Japanese inspiration there. Um, you know, um, standard kind of mid-range steel. I think something like this would be awesome in a high-end steel. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Comfortable handle. A little skinny for me. I guess if you're wearing gloves or something, though, um, it would... It would be uh, it would be really good. I mean, it's it's a very simple handle though. But I mean, if you look at the texture on there, man, I wish this was like G10 instead of plastic. Um, but maybe they'll release some you know special editions or something in the future. On the other hand, though, just the shape and the actual big chunk of steel you have here means that in terms of a canvas for custom work, this would be great. Weight is pretty good. Balance is is pretty good. Um, can maneuver it around in your hand pretty well. I guess we've got to check out that edge right out of the box, huh? Not too bad, huh? Well, I always say, pretty good, not too bad, nice. Right before it fucks up. There we go. Nice. I, I love that it's a non-serrated, there's a nice long belly on there hollow grind, so great for slicing. Cuts pretty easily. I bet if you needed to do a little chopping action with it, it'd be pretty good. These are uh, the... I don't want to call it jimping, because I don't know if it's strictly jimping, but these, you know, these grind outs right here, pretty good to catch your thumb, give you a good grip on it. I think it would be a, a pretty, I mean, decent knife. Not great, but decent. So I'm going to put it in the like it pile, just because 
I like CRKT. Um, I think a lot of their stuff is, uh, I've said this over and over, great knives. They have very good stuff. I think a lot of it is overpriced. Um, I think that for the price of this knife, it should at least come with a slightly better steel or, or G10 handles or something. Um, a little bit more option with the sheath, but I mean, it is. I could see the value in this knife. It's a good knife, whether you want to keep it in a tackle box, whether you want to keep it in a glove compartment, whether you want to carry it around on you. I wouldn't necessarily call it a tactical knife by the definition of tactical. Reference my tactical rant. You can look up the video. I'm not going to put a link to it, but um, I think it is a good knife with some solid potential. Okay, folks. Well, there you go. That was uh, our first box for May 2018. Um, we had some definite don't like it's. We had some definite like it's. We had some right there in the middle. So had a fun little DIY project going there and everything. Yeah. Um, interesting knife. I definitely want to carry it around and try it out a little bit. And, you know, get back to you if I discover anything else. I, you know, I, I might take it to the shop and see if we can uh, coat it a little bit. I'm thinking, uh, you know, a nice Cerakote, like a sniper green coating on this thing with the, the black scales would look pretty good. You want to talk about some tactical look? There you go. Um, although that's a beautiful stone wash. I'd hate to lose it. So anyway, guys, what are your thoughts on the stuff in this box? you agree with my, um, with my ratings on stuff or disagree? Yes, no, why? This, by the way, definitely will be a giveaway item for the next big giveaway. I think somebody can get some good use out of this guy right here. Possibly other stuff, but I mean, definitely this. One. Anyway, until the next box, which, by the way, will hopefully be unboxed, like I said, today, later on today. You guys are all totally awesome. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll be back again real soon.